Hello everyone. Today, I will try something new. I have a couple games I've been trying to showcase, since they are not very well known, but I feel like they deserve the recognition. The first one of these is called Delta V, Rings of Saturn. The game is set in the late 2200s, when humanity is already spreading across the solar system. You play as a humble asteroid miner, trying to make a living off extracting useful minerals from the frozen ringlets, around the gas giant of Saturn. As you can see, the game itself is a top-down 2D affair, where you navigate the ring system, trying not to collide with things, as you chase down fast-flying nuggets of precious beryllium. Everything in this game is operating under Newtonian laws of motion. Your ship has reaction control system, or RCS thrusters, which will help you navigate, and once you give a nudge in any given direction, you will keep going until you either give another nudge in the opposite way, or bump into something. Needless to say, this kind of deceleration can be a bit harmful to your bottom line. You always start in the main base of operations, a massive space station called Enceladus Prime, orbiting the Saturnian moon of Enceladus. Go figure. It is all the amenities you will need to make your way around the rings, including the mineral market with fluctuating prices, a repair shop, equipment vendors, a tuning service for your different equipment, a place to hire crew, and even a ship dealer, who will sell you brand new, or quote-unquote, slightly used mining vessels. When you are ready to go out for another ring dive, all you need to do is decide how deep you want to go, and you're off. To maximize profits, you will want to start at the very edge, and work your way in, but it's up to you to make a cost-benefit analysis. As I've said before, the game operates under the Newtonian laws of motion. As you break things, they will start flying apart, and once they are in motion, they will remain so, since there is no air to slow them down. The most valuable element you can find in the ringlets is beryllium, and it has a nasty habit of shooting off at high speeds whenever it gets freed from its icy prison, so if it's a particularly valuable nugget, it can get a bit tricky to get hold of it, especially in denser parts of the ring system. This also applies to your own ship in more ways than one. As you start filling your cargo holds, your ship will start becoming unbalanced, and it will be harder to keep it steady. And most interestingly, your internal mineral storage is also physics-based. Once you scoop up a nugget, it will be inside your ship, but it won't be strapped down. As you turn, accelerate and jostle the ship around, things will bump around in there. Let's say you are facing forward, and want to slow down. You engage the front thrusters, and open the cargo scoop. Guess what happens? It's embarrassing how many times I had to clean up after accidents like this. There are specialized cargo holds that have built-in one-way doors that will let mineral nuggets through, but won't let them fly out. But these have a more limited space as a result, so there's that. Or you can buy containers with a furnace functionality, which heat up the nuggets, boiling off the worthless water still clinging to the minerals, resulting in clean, processed elements. Since water is so plentiful in the rings, it is considered a waste material, and while you can sell it for a pittance, it's much more worthwhile to go home with as much valuable stuff as you can not being weighed down by useless H2O. As a general rule of thumb, the deeper you go the more valuable the minerals you will find. But that's not always true, as different zones have a different mineral makeup, and if you feel like you only ever find cheap iron, maybe it's time to move on to a different place. Of course, with more reward comes more risk. In deeper areas you are more likely to encounter pirates, who will either try to shake you down for protection money, or attack straight away. In most cases, the best option is to run as fast as you can, since you are a miner, not a gunship captain. That of course depends on your surroundings. It's harder to be nimble in a dense cluster of asteroids. Thankfully, those are not the only people you can meet out there. You will often run into other miners, who will sometimes give you a call, asking if you can help out with a bit of cash, tell you to buzz off their territory, or just pop in to say hi to one of your crew members, who used to be part of their team. There are also derelicts, which can be a very lucrative find, as long as you can manage to make them work, or grab hold of them somehow, and tow them back to the station. There are a lot of things you can encounter, and I will not spoil them for you now. But let's just say, that these random finds are what make the game more than just an asteroid mining simulator. There are often just interesting occurrences, like a station asking for a specific element, which they will pay a premium price for, or something a bit more sinister. 
sometimes even your crew members can give you tasks to do, which can take several separate ring dives to accomplish. One of the most important decisions you will make in the game is how to outfit your ship. There are a lot of different systems you can switch out, including propulsion, power generation, or fuel tanks. I previously touched upon the different kinds of cargo bays, but there are also external containers you can slap on your vessel. There are different ways to break asteroids apart, like rail guns, microwave emitters, or good old mining lasers. Or just turn your main thruster towards a big chunk of ice, and melt it that way. You can even change the way the user interface looks. Usually these are ship specific, but if you like one over another, you can just buy the one you prefer. Another important aspect of the game is your crew members. There are four different kinds, all giving you important benefits. One of these is the geologist ability to scan mineral nuggets in the field, giving you a rough estimate of their value. Or hire an astrogator, who can calculate the future positions of certain objects you find during your ring dives, so you can visit them later. Another important occupation is the mechanic. They are the members of your team who can actually deal with repairs. When out on a ring dive, you can only make so-called jury-rigged solutions to your problems. Basically, if a certain aspect of an equipment is malfunctioning, you can sacrifice another functionality to help with whatever is going wrong. For example, you can adjust the alignment of your thrusters if they got banged up, but in return they will be more prone to misfires, or more likely to sustain damage due to prolonged use. To fix the actual issue with the part, you will need to go back to the station, and repair it there. And this is also done by your mechanic. If you don't have one, the only option will be to pay extortionate prices to replace the part. But based on the skill of your crewmate, they can repair it to a certain percentage, saving you a lot of money in the long run. Another important decision to make is the ship you'll be using. Each have their own quirks. There are ones that have a lot of cargo space, or a built-in ice grinder, or a series of hard points that can mount one of the many different items you can find at the equipment vendor. You can find brand new ships on offer at the dealer, but they are quite expensive. A good alternative are the many, used ships. They will come with a random assortment of systems, but they will also be a bit worse for wear. But if you have a good enough mechanic, that part of the purchase shouldn't be an issue. Now, here comes the good part. At the time this video is released, the game is free for everyone. I will add the link to the Steam page in the description, and if you download the demo, you will be playing the full game. That is intentional. Due to the war in Ukraine, the developer decided to replace the demo with the full game for the time being, so people can use the money for charities instead. The game is also constantly being updated, receiving new additions and fixes quite regularly. This developer seemed to be very passionate, and I truly believe that the asking price of a measly 8 euros is a downright steal for such a diamond in the rough. It is one of my go-to games when I want to relax a little. I put in a podcast or an audiobook to listen to, boot up the game, and time will melt away, as I fly around, chasing beryllium nuggets among the frozen rings of Saturn. I hope I managed to pique your interest. As I've said, you can find the link to the game Steam page in the description. As usual, thank you for watching. Until next time. I will see you later.